how remarkable is the harvest season in American agricultural regions? There are countless varieties of rich produce. Harvesting machines operate non-stop in the fields. Right now, let's watch American farmers harvesting millions of tons of crops from the 2024 season. First, let's explore the garlic fields. This crop has a stable market demand and is also easy to grow on a large scale. Nutrient-rich and well-drained soil is almost all that garlic needs. Due to garlic's ability to withstand low winter temperatures and its need for warmer temperatures ranging from 20 to 38 degrees Celsius in the summer, it is well suited for temperate climates. California and Texas are two of the most important garlic producing states. When garlic plants develop into small bulbs, about one month before they are fully mature, some farmers harvest young garlic. This is a seasonal delicacy. The process of garlic bulb formation depends on the day, length and is triggered by 12 hours of sunlight per day. Typically, garlic varieties require 9 to 10 months to grow and mature. However, there are short season varieties that can take about 5 to 6 months to harvest. The garlic harvest season ranges from late June to August. Farmers start harvesting when the tops begin to turn yellow and fall over, but before they dry out completely. Farmers leave the bulbs in the ground for a few weeks after the tops turn brown, then dig them up around mid-June. For large-scale garlic harvesting, farmers need to use mechanised harvesters. During the harvest process, a specialised shaker plate shakes the garlic bulbs to remove the soil before trimming the stems. A conveyor belt then transports the garlic bulbs to the harvester's storage bin. When farmers allow garlic to dry completely in the field, it makes harvesting easier and improves storability. Once the roots and outer layers of the garlic bulbs have been dried, farmers have no need to wash the garlic. Instead, they cut the roots and clean off the dirt. Garlic is stored as whole bulbs in a cool place, with the ideal temperature being around 13 to 14 degrees Celsius. More than 30 US states grow watermelons. With the harvest season starting on the east coast and extending west and north across the country for months. High season varies slightly depending on the region. For most regions of the United States, watermelons are best from May to September. Watermelon harvest time ranges from 100 to 120 days, depending on the region and type of watermelon. Florida, Georgia and California are the top watermelon producing states in the US. The total harvest of these three states is about 2.9 billion pounds of watermelon each year. When you see the skin light up, the white spots on the watermelon turn yellow. Besides this, when you hit a watermelon, it will make a loud sound. At this time, the melons have become lighter and the leaves dry out. Those are all the signs that they are ready to be harvested. Watermelons will be cut manually with sharp tools. The cutter must be extremely careful to not damage the fruit. To avoid skin scratches and rot, Watermelon harvesting takes place only in dry weather. After harvesting, farmers turn the bottom down so the watermelon doesn't get sunburned. 
Most watermelon fields are picked twice during the season. On average, each watermelon plant will have two to three fruits harvested. A group of workers go ahead and cut the watermelons from the vines before flipping them over to indicate they are ready. At this time, another group of workers went to pick up the cut watermelons in the back. They combine to form a watermelon transport line, carefully loading them onto trucks for packaging. To get watermelons safely to storage facilities, farmers place them carefully in trucks lined with soft fabric as well as hay or straw at the bottom. They control the temperature to be 10 to 16 degrees Celsius in order to keep the watermelons at the highest quality condition and extend their shelf life. Sugarcane grows in the states of Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. Of these, about 50% of cane sugar produced in the United States comes from Florida, accounting for about 20% of the total sugar consumed in the country. The Florida sugar industry has an annual income of over 800 million US dollars and total economic value of over 2 billion US dollars. Mature sugarcane plants grow up to 10 feet tall. Farmers use mechanical machines to harvest sugarcane during September to January. Mechanized harvesting helps farmers to reduce the average harvesting time from 32 hours to just 6 to 12. This increases the harvest efficiency and leads to a higher yield and greater profits for the farm. Normally, farmers will harvest a sugarcane crop every three to five years. Southern Louisiana receives an average of 68 inches of rain per year, creating harsh conditions. But sugarcane harvesting takes place rain or shine. Sugarcane fields are often muddy, requiring harvesters to be mounted on tracks instead of wheels that can get stuck in the mud. The harvester moves through the sugarcane beds. After cutting the sugarcane, rotating arms will separate the leaves from the sugarcane stem. They continue to move the cane stalks through the cutters to cut them into smaller pieces. When the harvest carts are filled, they are then transferred to trucks. Sugarcane leaves are pushed back into the field, where they act as a fertilizer. The sugarcane harvester can cut up to 60 tons per hour. Scientific advances help develop the scale and productivity of the sugarcane industry. Up to now, US sugarcane production in 2024 is estimated to reach around 3,690 million tons. Besides sugarcane production, each cherry season in the US produces around 245,000 tons. The harvest season usually lasts from about May to July every year and cannot be left too long. When the cherries are round, dark red and smooth, this is a sign that they are ready to harvest. Farmers will prioritize picking ripe berries evenly, one branch at a time on the tree. They kept harvesting each tree in turn until the cherry fields ran out. Once the bag is full, the farmer will pour the cherries into the bin and pick up the branches and leaves. Cherry picking is quite simple, but requires care and gentleness. Typically farms in the US need around 80 to 120 workers, and harvesting usually takes place in about a month. Workers start picking at 5 a.m. and continue working until it gets too hot. The cherries are placed into large bins that can hold 350 pounds of fruit. 
In just one day, they will fill 200 barrels. Water cooling is an important step that helps ensure the quality of cherries remains high. Processing facilities cool cherries with hydrogen, which is soaked in cold water to lower the internal temperature. This is because if cherries are not kept cold, they will start to lose their firmness and overall quality very quickly. The United States is one of the world's largest blueberry producers, with an average production of around 700 million pounds of fruit each year. Blueberries grow all over the US, and there are more than 26 states that produce them commercially. Blueberries can be planted in spring or late fall. In winter climates, blueberry season can begin as early as March and last until May. Blueberry production acreage in the US is expanding. Commercial blueberry growers use mechanical harvesters to pick blueberries for the fresh national blueberry market. Before using a harvester, farmers need to consider some reasonable plants, especially furrow configuration. Blueberry plants have a narrow canopy, which can help reduce above ground losses during harvest. Therefore, farmers make the distance between rows at least 9 to 10 feet. Additionally, there should be a minimum of 30 feet of clearance at the end of each row to allow harvesting equipment to rotate. Southwest Georgia Farm was one of the first farms in the US to use the new blueberry harvesting technology from the Netherlands. The most common type of harvester is the inter-row harvester. This type of machine is popular because it can harvest high fruit yields. Achieving a harvest rate of over 98% for ripe blueberries. Meanwhile, still be sure to handle the blueberries gently to avoid any damage. At the same time, it does not require a lot of labor, minimizing harvest costs. Modern farmers have many different equipment options for agricultural activities. From plows, lawnmowers to harvesters, and they all meet the needs of livestock farmers and industrial scale farming operations. Now let's go to the fields to see how farmers use heavy machinery. The first is the plow, which is usually operated by a tractor. The plow breaks up hard soil to a depth of 6 to 16 centimeters by cutting, lifting and reversing the blade. Plows come in many different types of blades, designed for a certain type of tillage and soil type. These blades break up soil clumps, making the soil surface flatter and cleaner. It also loosens the soil by turning it over making seeding much easier. At the same time, it provides space and nutrients for new plants. Usually, ploughing is done at the end of the harvesting process. The purpose of this technique is to remove weeds and remnants of the previous crop, so as not to affect the growth of the plant. In this way, farmers can soften the soil and gradually prepare it for the next crop. Plowing is one of the most important soil management practices. A new field will be impermeable and lacking in oxygen. Therefore, plowing increases porosity, which is essential for the circulation of water, oxygen and other organic matter. At the same time, it reduces the activity of parasitic animals that hinder plant growth. All of these benefits can be delivered without increasing fuel costs and without causing a major impact on the environment. Conventional ploughing rarely exceeds 20 centimetres. Meanwhile, 
deep plows can plow to a depth greater than 50 centimetres. Deep ploughing changes soil structure and drainage. At the same time, it restores the ideal structure of the soil. The plough turns the soil over and leaves space on the surface for a new field where there was none before. Similar to a shallow plough, it also supports the birth and growth of new plants in the future. In fact, the plants will be able to find suitable space to grow its roots. Additionally, deep ploughing tends to provide better control of many perennial weeds than shallow ploughing. Grasslands harvested per hectare provide at least 85% of the profits for most farms. And this is the cheapest form of feed. Machines were developed to maintain and harvest abundant grass in the spring and summer. At the same time, they create high productivity of quality green forage. Farmers can use simple bar mowers. They use a reciprocating knife. Meanwhile, rotary mowers use rotating discs to harvest quickly. After cutting, the grass is collected on trucks and brought to the farm, meeting the fresh food needs of livestock. During the summer months, grass grows vigorously and is often harvested by livestock farms. Warm, dry weather is the ideal time to harvest grass for silage. Farmers can leave grass in the field for several hours until it withers. This reduces the humidity. The grass is then collected and piled in a pile in the farm yard. These machines compress the grass tightly to remove as much air as possible or roll it into large bales. Whatever method is used, the fresh grass will be covered with a plastic sheet and sealed to remove as much oxygen as possible. Over several months, the bacteria in the grass will ferment effectively. Harvested grass can also be dried in the field. The farmer will return in a few days and the hay harvester will help bale the hay. Farmers collect and stack bales with just one tractor, while significantly reducing the pressure on fields from moving heavy machinery. Grapes are delicate and easily damaged by heavy machinery. This is an extremely effective combination. Most commercial harvesters use roller beaters or stem vibrators to remove the fruit from the vine. Their main attack uses a flexible horizontal twin bar to hit the tree canopy and shake it to make the grapes fall out. In some regions, mechanical harvesting reduces labour costs by up to 75%. Machines move through the grape beds and vibrate the vines so the grapes fall onto the conveyor belt. Once collected, impurities are removed through a series of networks. The amount of grapes collected will immediately be put through trucks to be transported to the processing plant. This mechanical harvesting method is used exclusively for wine grapes. It is estimated that a machine can pick a hectare in about five hours. Meanwhile, manual labour can take from one to ten days to harvest the same area. Harvesters can also run 24 hours a day. Mechanical harvesting is often more cost effective and it is well suited for large vineyards located on flat land. When using a harvester, the grapes may become cold more quickly than when picked by hand. These machines are often equipped with lights to support harvesting at night. This helps farmers to shorten harvest time, especially during peak periods. If the grape stays on the vine for too long, it will quickly spoil. 
Although machinery supports almost all harvesting activities, farmers often check before operating the machine. They must ensure that the machine has enough fuel, all the lights are working, has good tire pressure, as well as to ensure that the brakes are working properly. They will also check for any hydraulic leaks and make any necessary repairs. Similar to grapes, farmers use peanut harvesters to harvest peanuts. This can effectively save labour and reduce labour intensity. Jobs that usually take days or even weeks as manual labour can now be done in a few hours. However, during harvesting, there are some higher requirements for adjusting soil parameters. In wet soil areas, mechanised operations with high resistance and high power consumption will easily remove impurities. To start harvesting, farmers use a peanut digger to go through each row. The machine is equipped with a blade to cut roots from the lower part of the plant. The rotating spikes on the machine dig into the soil and invert the plant so that it is lined up on the ground. The peanuts face to the side. Peanuts can be left in the field for a few days to dry. When the moisture content is about 10%, it's time to collect them with a combine. The harvester passes by and the peanuts are quickly transferred to the back door by rollers, keeping them from sinking into the soil. A vibrating screen is designed to help remove impurities as soon as the peanuts are collected on the machine. Machines help to remove peanuts from the vines and also help to remove extra dirt from the peanuts. As the combine passes through the rows, it blows the peanuts into a container and spreads the dry peanut stalks back into the soil. The peanut harvester combines digging, lifting and reversing operations in one seamless process. It is especially good at not breaking peanuts. The breakage rate is less than 1%. At the same time, its peanut picking rate can reach up to 98%. This saves a lot of labour costs. Not only do people harvest on land, heavy machinery can also work well in underwater environments. Cranberry harvesters help farmers accelerate output and develop production scale. In the fall, we'll see harvesters going through the fields of ruby red cranberries. The harvester has opened up a good direction for this $200 million a year industry. The majority of the world's cranberries are grown in northeastern North America, especially in the swamps of Massachusetts and New Jersey. Cranberry harvest time usually lasts from late September to late October. Farmers will flood the fields with water to prevent them from frost. The water level is around 18 inches. Growers then use water rolls also known as an egg beater, to stir the water and separate the cranberries from the stems. Each berry has a small pocket of air that helps it to float to the surface of the water. Americans consume 400 million pounds of cranberries annually. The harvester drives through the furrows to stir the water and squeeze the fruit from the stems. It moves very lightly because it is equipped with balloon tires so as not to damage the trees. This is the most labour-intensive part of harvesting cranberries. Berries floating on the water are pushed to the collection point. With the help of a crane, workers pile the small red berries around a pump to suck them up. Finally, the cranberries are loaded into waiting trucks. They are then transported to processing facilities, where the cranberries are processed and packaged.